Hi, so my name is uh, Jeremy Seelan, and I'm one of the original Katana developers from Sony Pictures Imageworks. And I'm going to be talking a little bit today about Katana. Now, Sony Imageworks is the visual effects branch of Sony Pictures. We've been around for uh, almost 20 years now, and we've worked on hundreds of films, including Green Lantern, Spider-Man series, Alice in Wonderland. And our, our impact in uh, computer graphics goes back many years. So if you think back to Stuart Little, which we worked on in 1999, this was one of the uh, first uh, films to feature a CG character as the uh, main hero. And I want you to look at the shot and just get a sense of the visual complexity involved. So there's a single character. Uh, it's rather low geometric complexity, with the exception of uh, fur and hair. But those are really procedurally generated. So it's a pretty simple character. It can fit in the computer's memory even at the time. And it's just a relative, relatively straightforward thing to consider from the human perspective. So I'd like to jump forward 10 years. And here's a shot from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And I'd like you to get a sense of the massive increase in complexity that we see both on the CG feature animation side as well as in visual effects. And if you think about in the last 10 years from 1999 to 2009, even though the computers have gotten substantially faster, in many cases tens of thousands of times faster, humans really have not. So the question is, how do you present to a human this much information where they can interact with the crowd, interact with the detail, in a way that they can really efficiently do it? And that's where Katana sort of comes in. So I was one of the original developers of Katana, along with uh, Steve Levides and Brian Hall. And we started in 2003 to really address this problem. We were doing simple productions, and we saw the complex things coming up with massive crowds, massive environments, and literally thousands of shots in a film. And the question was, how could we really approach those and approach that complexity? So that's what Katana is designed to do. It's, it's less of a lighting tool. People often describe it as, oh, it's a way to use lights or a way to talk to the render. But it's really more than that. It's really sort of a toolkit that allows you to put together different visual effects and CG animated feature pipelines. And it's, intrinsically designed with one goal in mind, which is how do you deal with complexity, both shot and pipeline complexity, but also scene complexity in terms of geometric detail. So this is, I dug this up from the archives, this is actually the first picture we ever rendered in Katana. We had been working on it a few months, and we had written the core geometric processing engine, which for those who are uh, familiar with the term, it's a uh, recursive geometric procedural in something such as PR Man, where it basically calls into itself. But uh, the underlying technology, even though this is a really simple image, is pretty powerful. So we uh, handed this to the artists, and literally a few months later, this is what they were doing with it. This is a fully CG shot from uh, Spider-Man 3, and we were really excited when we saw this. This is uh, the, the black Spider-Man character is the first character ever looked at in uh, Katana. So we were really psyched that they went from something like this to something like this in the span of a few months. And in fact, uh, when we originally started developing Katana, they had promised us that it would only be used on a few small shows, uh, you know, just to test it out, sort of work through the kinks. And as soon as we had it ready, even in its alpha stage, Spider-Man 3, Surf's Up, and Beowulf immediately switched to it, which was uh, flattering, but also a bit scary to roll something out that early in its development. So I'm going to be talking about a few different types of productions we've used Katana on. Uh, the CG feature pipelines, such as Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Surf's Up, and Arthur Christmas, which is upcoming, as well as the visual effects pipelines that we use on more traditional films, such as Spider-Man and Watchmen, things of that nature. So the name of the game in CG features is how do you deal with lots of shots, all of which are complex. So this is the uh, color script from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And I just want you to get a sense of how many shots are involved in the production of an animated feature. It's hundreds, if not thousands, of shots. In this case, probably 12, 1,300 shots. So the name of the game is efficiency. How can you efficiently create uh, these shots over many, many sequences? So what we do is we set up a template. Here's an actual katana scene used on Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And for all of you who have used compositing packages such, such as Nuke, uh, this will no doubt look familiar. Essentially, it's just a scene on rails. So the artist doesn't start with an empty scene. Instead, they start with something that describes the steps. So this is where you bring in geometry. This is where you add your lights. This is where you do material assignments and other standards. This is where you set up your render passes, and so on. And the idea being that if you jump from shot to shot, uh, it wouldn't surprise you what you see in your katana scene. And uh, more than that, if you develop standards, so here's an environment from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs as well. And what we did is it's a very complex lighting environment. Each of the tables is an emissive uh, area light. Uh, this is a full global illumination solution using the Arnold renderer. And the idea being that we had a single artist do look development for this area. And then they hand off those standards to just drop in all the individual shots. 
Now the beauty of Katana is it might have taken us days to get the first render out previously. Now we can do it in a matter of hours once the environment's been looked at. So it's really helped us to do uh, sequence standards and things like that really, really efficiently. You can see all the lighting passes being added in, reflections, refractions, bounce lights, area lights, and so on to give the final effect. So now I'm going to talk about uh, visual effects pipelines and how Katana handles them. And the name of the game for visual effects pipelines is complexity. So here are some shots from uh, Alice in Wonderland. And what I want you to realize is just really how complex the different shots are, both in terms of geometry and more interestingly, perhaps, that the uh, pipelines are rather complex themselves. So in animated features, you might have a lot of shots that are similar to each other. In a visual effects film, such as Alice in Wonderland, many, many more of the shots are one-offs, where it only handles uh, specific cases. So the one first big thing that all of Katana is designed to handle is geometric complexity. Here's a shot from Watchmen, and I'd like you to get a sense of the geometric complexity. Now, if you tried to load a shot such as this in your renderer all at a single time, or in your computer all at a single time, there's no way it would be able to handle that much complexity. So at its core, Katana does deferred loading of everything. That's essentially what it's designed around, as I mentioned earlier. So what Katana does is here's a real Katana scene being interacted with. And what you decide is, hey, if I'm interested in this building, I can open up the geometric detail zoom in and make the edits I want. When I'm done making those edits, I can close up all that information and still retain the change I've made, but the computer itself doesn't even know about the change. It's only stored the instructions on how to make that change. So it's a very powerful technique, which is at the core of a uh, katana. Now, these are the challenges that every visual effects studio faces. I mean, once you get to a certain size, you just have to address these problems. It's, if you have hundreds of artists working on assets and you have to bring them all into the same scene, there's just no way the computer is going to be able to load that amount of detail. So people often use proxy representations and so on. But you inevitably get to the problem where if you're using proxies and you need to make a change to something in that proxy, how can you actually do that addressing? Katana is designed with that in mind, where you can open it up, make the change at the level, and then close it back up. So it really gives you the best of both worlds. So here's the real shot from the uh, Watchman scene. You can see how it uh, uses lots of passes. So these are the nodes that bring in the building destruction and the simulation. These are uh, nodes that actually dynamically generate the materials on the cars and come up with variations in the color and shading. These are nodes that bring in the, the uh, rocks and the effect simulations. And these are all brought together to create the final shot. And here is the final katana graph. And I, I hope this doesn't scare people from the complexity, because it's, it's pretty complex. But it's no more than you would expect in a traditional uh, compositing graph. And it really lets you show how you can customize the pipelines. You can really think of each of these uh, complex chunks of the node graph as a custom pipeline tailored for this shot. And here's the final node graph for that Watchman shot. And that'll be all. Thank you.